This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from the creativedojo.net. Welcome to another After Effects video tutorial. Today in this tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at how to create this kind of audio spectrum that reacts to our audio just like this. So it's a pretty neat effect. This is actually inspired by the YouTube channel Chill Nation. They do a lot of audio visualizers just like this for their tracks. A lot of audio YouTube channels do this for their tracks so that you're not looking at just a still image for the album cover or for the whole entire video. Um, but this is just another way to kind of visualize your audio for your video, completely built with After Effects built-in plugins and tools. Let's go ahead and get started here. So I have this demo tutorial comp right here. And basically this is a 1080p comp. It has our background image right here, which is just a regular image that I found on Unsplash. And I blurred it out with a Gaussian blur right here to kind of create this really nice smooth gradient. Of course, you can create your own background image, you can create your own gradients using linear RAMs and Photoshop, or you can just blur out an image like I did to create these really nice smooth gradients here, nothing special here. I also have my music imported right here. This is an MP3 file, um, links and credits down below, but this is just my music track right here. And if we hit LL on the keyboard, you can actually kind of see the track right here in the audio waveform. So this is our track. So these are two layers into our timeline. Let's go ahead and build this out. So I also have my logo right here, which I'm gonna drag in. This can be your logo, your YouTube channel, it can be whatever you want, your own graphic, your own video. I have a round logo, which kind of works out here. So I'm gonna set my scale to 6% because it's kind of large. And so we have our logo right here. Now the key to this trick is actually to create a new layer, new solid, we'll call this spectrum white and go ahead and make comp size, hit okay. And we're gonna apply the magic effect right here called audio spectrum. We'll drag that into the layer right here. And that will create a spectrum right here, which by default does not react to our audio. We have to go ahead and go in here and change the audio layer to our music layer right here. And so once you select your music track, whatever this is, um, you will see that the audio spectrum kind of reacts to music just like this. And this is pretty cool here. Now there's a lot of parameters, they're pretty straightforward. What I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and create a mask path, right? So I'm gonna go into the, our audio spectrum layer that we already have. I'm gonna go ahead and click and hold to select the Eclipse tool. Now if your video or your graphic is not a circle, you can go ahead and use a rectangle tool or a star tool, or you can use a pen tool and draw your own custom path. But since my logo is a circle, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Ellipse tool right here to kind of draw around my logo. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the title safe right here. Make sure that our spectrum white layer is selected and go ahead and click on the center of the composition more or less and hold down shift and drag. It's gonna create a perfect circle and then press the command or windows key I believe to create a nice centered circle kind of just like this more or less. Hit okay. And so now we have a mask on our spectrum white layer and I'm gonna go ahead and under path, select our new path, which is called mask one. And so now it's going to wrap the audio spectrum along our path that we just traced out, which is a circle. And it's gonna create, create a nice little ellipse just like this. So now it's starting to react. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my title safe. And so you have something like this. And so I'm gonna go ahead and increase the maximum height just a little bit so we can kind of see and we'll set the inside color to white. And in this particular case, I'm gonna go ahead and set the outside color to the same color as the inside color. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit down alter option on the stopwatch and just pick whip the outside color to the inside color. Or if you're lazy, you can go ahead and just select both white colors right here. Um, they'll come in handy whenever we start duplicating this thing a little bit. All right, so now that the inside color is white, I'm gonna go ahead and increase our thickness a little bit and go ahead and decrease our softness a little bit. So this is our audio spectrum. This can be a look on its own right here. I'm gonna go ahead and rather than having it kind of um, shoot upwards and downwards, I just want it to shoot upwards. And I believe that is side B right here. So now the spectrum kind of just shoots outwards rather than both right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of define the frequency bands right here to kind of increase the density right here. And so you kind of want it to be more or less pretty solid. 
more or less. And the key to this thing is we want to define a star and end frequency. So right now the range is really, really high. So right now this audio spectrum is showing the frequency from 20 to 2000. So it's pretty much displaying the whole range of the track right here. Now I want this white area, this white spectrum to be mostly the bass, which is the lower end frequency. So as you can see right now, it's very, very small. It's very, very detailed spectrum because the range is really, really high. Now, the smaller the range is right here, the less detail and the larger their frequency would be in terms of visualization. So I want this frequency to be kind of at zero to maybe let's just say 200 or so. And as you can see already, the detail has become a lot less because we're trying to just show um, one to 200 frequency in this large area right here. So the detail is a lot less. Now things are being cut off right now because we have our mask applied. I'm gonna go ahead and click on our mask and set it to none. And so now we're gonna we're gonna have our full spectrum as right. So as you can see, if we go ahead and increase the end frequency, we get a lot more detail in the spectrum. And we don't want that. So we want to set things kind of low between the star and end frequency. So from one to two hundred, I think it's a good set for this tracker right here. And this is gonna display most of the bass right here, as you can see. Now don't copy these numbers willy nilly because this really depends on your track. If your track has a lot of high end frequency, then you might need to shift these numbers up. If, you're, if your track is mostly bass, you want to keep these numbers kind of low to match the frequency right here. And so from one to 200 is kind of good for me, maybe even 150 or so for this particular track, just to really show the bass right here. I'm going to go ahead and decrease the maximum height. We don't want it to be that, uh, that heavy here. All right, so we have our first spectrum right here. And now pretty much the rest of it is going to be just duplicating it and kind of adjusting it as so. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate our spectrum white. We'll call this spectrum yellow. And we'll go ahead and bring it underneath our logo in this particular case. And I'm going to go ahead and change the inside color to a kind of a bright yellow or so. And so right now it looks the exact same as the white. We want to shift our frequency. So we've already covered from one through 150 from our white spectrum. Let's cover 150 to let's just say 250 with our yellow. And we'll go ahead and increase the height too. So now you start to kind of see the white is going to show the base and then the yellow is going to show just a little bit higher frequency than that as well. And we'll go ahead and duplicate this one more time. And we will call this one spectrum red. And I'm going to go ahead and change the color to a nice between a red and a magenta color, something like this right here. And again, we'll bump it up from 250 to let's just say 400 or so. So the red is going to show a different spectrum of the song. Just like this. Maybe we'll crank up the height to 580. And then we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this one more time. We'll call this spectrum blue. And it's the exact same thing. We'll change the color to a nice blue color as such. And in this particular case, we'll do maybe 400 to 600 or so. And we'll crank up the height for that as well. So now we're starting to have a nice little spectrum like this. And we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and duplicate this one more time. And we'll call this spectrum green. And lastly, we'll change the color to a green color. And we'll set the frequency from 650 to let's just say 800. And again, these values will change depending on your particular track and the frequencies of your track. Um, but this is what kind of works for my track right here. All right, so you have all your spectrums and they're pretty much reacting to audio right here. Now, what I want to do next is kind of animate my logo to where it's kind of like doing a nice little bass kick with the scale so that your logo is just not sitting there. And a quick way to do that is going to go and select our music layer right here, or audio layer, go to right click, keyframe assistant, and click convert audio to keyframes. And that's going to pretty much average out the song and it's going to create a null layer right here. Go and hit UU in the keyboard to show all the keyframes. We're going to delete the left and right channels because it's not really important in this particular case. And what we have here is a slider 
which is kind of like the average volume output of our particular track right here. And so these values correlate to our track of volume and we can kind of use these values to kind of animate our logo based on the loudness of everything. So we can go ahead and click on our logo right here, hit S on the keyboard for scale, hit alter option and click on the stopwatch for an expression so we can enter in an expression. Let's create a new variable called var size equals, and we're gonna say the size is gonna equal in this particular case, 6%, six plus, and then we're gonna pick whip to our slider here. So this number is a little bit too intense here. We don't want it to scale by, by 11.79. Um, we wanna go ahead and divide this by 100 or so. Um, and this particular number works best for my particular comp. And then we're gonna do a semicolon, and then bracket size, size, and then semicolon, hit okay. And so it's gonna make my logo at least 6% in size, and it's gonna plus whatever this stuff is, about to buy 100, to kind of animate my Career of Dojo logo based on the loudness of my track here. So you kind of get that kind of uh, bass kick, drum kick kind of look for your logo as it kind of animates bigger and smaller on the loudness of the track here. And so essentially, this is kind of how you create the whole thing. Um, as you can see, you need to go in there and kind of play around with the maximum height and play around with all the frequencies and thickness and everything like that to really tone in the look that you're going for. What I did in the final example was I actually created an adjustment layer here. We call this glow and I added a glow effect to everything here. I actually added two glows, one for the overall kind of atmosphere right here. Go ahead and increase the radius. Uh, just a very diffuse glow, just to kind of give it a subtle glow like that. And then I added another glow, really increase the threshold right here, really increase the radius, and then decrease the intensity. And you can apply this glow individually to all the spectrums. You can even go ahead and change the blending modes from, from normal to screen or add to create a different look right here for the spectrum visuals. And then what I also did in the final example was I actually created another adjustment layer. We call this RGB. And I actually applied a RGB split effect from Red Giant Universe. This is actually a paid plugin, so this is not built into After Effects. So you might not have this unless you have Universe. Um, if you want a free alternative, you can go ahead and use my Dojo uh, glitch script to kind of create a chromatic aberration effect right here. But you know, with something like this, you can create a subtle, subtle RGB split chromatic aberration effect, and you'll create something like this, which reacts to your audio right here. Now, the way this spectrum works is that it actually warps around the start to the end in a circular path based on our path. So you look at this little harsh edge right here. I'm not exactly sure what the best way to solve this is. So if you guys have any ideas, let me know in the comments down below. So that's how you generally kind of create the audio spectrum effect right here. Um, again, the green is getting a little weird funky stuff right here. So you might need to tone that down, adjust the maximum height, adjust the frequency bands, adjust the number of frequency, the thickness, the softness, and kind of just play around with it. And you'll create a pretty cool, interesting look this way here. If you wanted to, you can go into your background layer. In this case, this is just an image layer. You can do hue and saturation, just kind of throw it in there. You can shift the hue and create some pretty interesting psychedelic looks and kind of just shift the background, play with the background and create your own looks here and just kind of, you know, have some fun with it. If you want, you can go ahead and create a kind of like a play bar button, you know, the name for the track. You can add a little play button and do all sorts of things, add little particles or smoke effects using particular or CC particle world to really kind of create your own look here and add some fun visuals to your visualizer here. Before I go, I want to give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only platform to create an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing things to choose from, fully customizable so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any code knowledge required. They have awesome 24 hour support, and best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the DOJO. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash DOJO. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So that's pretty much it guys. That's how you create this kind of audio spectrum look within After Effects using built-in tools. 
I have another older video tutorial that kind of shows you how to create a different type of spectrum look. Links again will be down in the video description down below. If you guys like videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel, hit that bell icon to stay notified of all of our uploads, and give this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. My name is Vincent Wynn from the Creative Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys. Bye.